Howdy, and welcome back to the Texas Bucket List. Over the years of doing this fun show, we have been able to enjoy the fruits of our labor by enjoying the fruits of our fine state. From apples, blueberries, peaches, we have enjoyed countless amount of cash crops that are cultivated right here in Texas. So we made it a point to head down to the valley to try some South Texas citrus, and that should be on everybody's bucket list. During the winter, most of Texas has to deal with cold weather, the occasional freeze, and trees without leaves. But that's not the case in the Rio Grande Valley. Folks from all over the country congregate to this part of the state. Some estimate that as many as 100,000 winter Texans call the valley home between October and March. That's probably because around these parts, it feels more like spring than snow season. Now, one of the biggest attractions to tourists and Texans alike down in the valley is Granny Claire's in Harlingen, one of several stops to get your squeeze on. It's winter and there's Real bugs bad. everywhere. What's going I know. On? <laughs> it's, we're in South Texas. <laughs> Karina Aguilera took us on a tour of this 50 acre farm that sprouted back in 1994. What's it like working with oranges? Very sweet. <laughs> you eat an orange every day? Yeah, when I'm here, yes. When I'm working, yes. <laughs> Bill and Claire Brighton originally owned the orchard, but in 2015, a local doctor decided to diversify her portfolio by purchasing the place for produce. One day she was just uh, passing by and she saw the for sale sign and she said, I'm gonna buy that orchard. And she did. So, so an I'm... orange a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. What's her name? Uh, she don't want us mentioning her name. Very interesting. A mysterious <laughs> RGV <Me>. doctor, doctor. <laughs> owns an orange and we don't know who. <laughs> yeah. Doogie Hauser? No. No. <laughs> Dr. Laura Croft? No. no. Dr. X? No. <laughs> Dr. Phil? No, well, that no. would be incorrect. <laughs> the one thing we do know is December through January is the optimum time to make your way to the orange grove. That's when they're the sweetest. That's why they make great Christmas gifts, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is one of our grapefruit trees. Holy moly, there's a lot of grapefruits on here. Yes, there is. It's amazing to see such huge citrus growing on a tree. So what do you look for when it comes to picking these things? Because they all look ready to me. Yes, they, you want to look at, you're looking at the color. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that there's no insects that have been eating into it and they're good to go. That's amazing. So yeah. do you just pull it off? You pull it off. Pull this off? Yes. Good night. <laughs> there it is. That's why we don't use machines. It takes a little bit of work. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> you got to be gentle, have that human touch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not very, not incredibly fragrant, but no. you know what's inside. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Now, citrus is native to the Orient, and it wasn't until the 1880s that orchards were established in the Lone Star State. Fortunately, the fruit has blossomed into a big industry that includes oranges. And this is our orange tree right here. Okay, Ma Mars or navel? Navel. Okay. Navel. And then the same thing with these, you just yes, pick them off. You just pick them off. Boy, oh boy. Uh oh, I think I did something oh, wrong. Oh yeah. Now you can just peel it and eat it. Oh! <laughs> well, if I must. <laughs> well, hold my grapefruit? Sure. Nice. <laughs> Do I just throw this one again? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm littering <laughs> while I'm surrounded by oranges on the yeah. floor. Once you get to the sweet center, it's worth the wait. We've experienced a lot of things in Texas, but there's nothing like experiencing fresh fruit off a off tree. A tree. It is just like mind blowing yeah. how different it tastes. It sure does. It's unreal. Of course, everyone is excited to try it. We weren't willing to move on, but comparing apples to oranges didn't last too long. We got you where we wanted to get you. So yeah, now you just have to stand here with us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on to the separator. This is where we separate the Mars oranges, the navel oranges, and the grapefruit. So basically all the oranges go in one bin and all the grapefruit goes in a bin? Yes. Now you can't help but notice, not all these oranges are super pretty. No. A lot of times you go to the store and they're super pretty. Yeah, no. Uh, the uglier the better, I say. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's what's on the inside <laughs> yeah, that counts. Exactly. I like that, I like that. What is this thing? That is a large grapefruit. That is a huge grapefruit. Yes, it is. This was hanging on a tree? <laughs> yes, it was. It just looks like a really big... I... <laughs> ah! uh, Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, if you're not into peeling your own, the fruit trays are some of the finest I've found, and they too are all done by hand. So this is our kitchen area where we prepare the trays. Okay, the we, fruit trays? The fruit trays. Okay. And this is uh, where we cut them up. These ladies here, they are professionals at it. They've been doing this for, she's been doing it for five years. Who's this? This is Thelma. Thelma, yeah. you're, you're busy with that knife. Keep, you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Thelma cut up citrus is like watching a world-class surgeon doing a delicate operation. She takes off the, the first layer. First layer. First layer of the skin. Changes knives. Okay, flattens out the side. And now she takes out the white layer. There's Second like, layer. You seems to be leaving a lot of flesh in there, but yes, that's okay. That, just so that's much. okay. Yeah, that's just you want to take off. Make sure you take off the white part of it because it's what makes it tart. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it tart, so you want to make sure all of it is gone. And then that's it. And now the arm, the navel. The navel, you go straight to it. It's just a one time. It has less skin, so you don't have to. Not as much cutting. Right. You can just get straight into that. Right. It's amazing that it, that it takes human hand to do it. Yeah, I know. Everybody thinks it's a machine that's doing it, but no, we have two ladies here that do it. Very good at it. And this over here is our end product. Oh, this is what it's looking like. That's How long does it take her to do a grapefruit bowl? Uh, probably about 15 minutes. So what do you go with first? Do you go with the grapefruit or do you go through orange? You want to go with the grapefruit first. Okay. This is normally a little bit more sour? Or? Yes. If, if you do the orange first, the grapefruit would be too sour. That looks like a piece of candy. Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. Can you try it? It is. Oh my gosh. Good. How about that? Grapefruit's supposed to taste like that? <laughs> yes. That is the most juicy, sweet, that's, perfect that's grapefruit. That's why people keep coming back. They're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Look at that. That is oh, some good goodness. grapefruit. Man, it's tickling my brain. Life is short, so you got to be sure to squeeze every last drop out of it. That right there is well worth a stop. Yes, it is. On the test. Yes. Mm -hmm. 